Yet, do you know, I'm still no closer to figuring out your secret. Because I don't have a secret. Well, you must. One that explains how you're able to be so, you know, frustratingly you. Hello, Paul. Congratulations on winning the 11 Second Club. That's fantastic. My name is Keith Sinte, and uh, I've been a professional character animator now for about 25 years. I started out as a traditional animator at Disney Feature Animation, and I was fortunate to be able to draw on uh, films like Pocahontas, uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Mulan, Tarzan, and uh, worked at DreamWorks on um, uh, Spirit, the one about the horses, Sinbad, and eventually um, worked into uh, CG animation. And um, my first uh, CG animated film was called Shark Slayer, eventually became Shark Tale. And that opened up a, a new world for me as far as animation goes. And um, I went over to, after that, I was at Sony and worked on their all animated CG films, Open Season and Surf's Up. And then I uh, got a taste of a little bit of motion capture with Monster House and uh, Beowulf. And then the doors really opened wide for me when I worked on my uh, first visual effects film, which was I Am Legend, uh, starring Will Smith. Uh, that opened up many doors for me, and I, I was able to go and work um, on films like uh, the Transformers movies. Uh, I've worked on Tron, um, went to Industrial Light Magic, and worked on... I'm a big Star Wars fan, so I was able to work on uh, the last three Star Wars pictures. Um, Rogue One, I animated K2SO. Um, on uh, Last Jedi, I was animating... Uh, the Millennium Falcon, which was a dream come true for me, as well as, you know, the TIE Fighters and um, various creatures, and then I worked on the Solo movie as well. Uh, currently, I am a uh, animation supervisor. I'm working, um, supervising the upcoming project called uh, Batwoman, and as well as other shows at uh, Encore VFX. Um, I've been working with Animation Mentor now for... Uh, I'm not sure now, about 12 or 13 years, and uh, maybe more, somewhere in there. But I've done a lot of these 11 Second Club critiques, so it's a pleasure to be able to do yours today. And uh, I think you came up with some a pretty clever piece of animation here, so I'd like to uh, take a look at it with you here. Yeah, do you know, I'm still no closer to figuring out your secret. Because I don't have a secret. Well, you must. One that explains how you're able to be so... You know, frustratingly you. It's really fine. Uh, nice nice piece of animation. I like the stuff you do, the subtle things where there is no dialogue at the end. You know, the expressions that you're able to bring into the characters. Um, you have some, some really nice ideas in acting. You have a good grasp of uh, the principles of animation, for sure. So I just want to talk to you about a few things, yeah. uh, constructively, if I may. Um, when I first saw this, your opening frame threw me a little bit because I hadn't watched it yet. You know, it was the first time seeing it. So the staging was a bit odd for me with this kind of a small character in front of this big, gigantic character. I didn't realize who this, you know, what this, the relationship was. And you want your audience to be able to just glance at your, at your frames and, and be able to tell instantly what's going on. The way this was set up, I thought maybe this was composited weird or something and somehow this guy was supposed to be in front of the guy behind him because of the scale situation. So I was thinking about this and how I would have done it was to have the establishing shot more like this. This guy gets a little bit lost in the background here so be careful when you're lighting your shots. That you, you know you want to make sure that everything is nice and clear. Um, I'm not sure if maybe nudging him a little bit more to have him silhouetted against this sort of black um, or blue window frame would help bring him out. I know you need him near the shoulder and everything, but this, I really didn't see him until almost the, you know, he makes an appearance. I had to go back and watch it again. But as, a, as an establishing shot, I think setting this up like this would have been better. And then going back and cutting to your close up. So in this first part, yeah, you know, I'm still no closer to figuring out your secret. 
figure out your secret. So maybe it could have been, you know, I'm really no closer to figuring out your, your secret. And then going into, you know, your pose here could have been this, you know, going into more of the close-up if you needed it. And I'm not even sure that you really need it. I drew over this pose here because the rhythm for me wasn't really working. It looked pinched at the waist, and this just felt a bit, um, I don't know, it just didn't have a pleasing shape to it. So I, wanted to, I went ahead and drew over it a little bit to try and come up with a little bit nicer feeling to the legs especially. When he first talks or begins to speak here, yeah, do you know I'm. It sounds like he's taking a breath in. You know, I always try and start the characters, especially if you can hear something like that, with an inhale before they begin to speak. Yeah, do you know. You do a small thing where you kind of open the mouth a teeny bit here, but it'd be nice to see something in the body to give it more of a or maybe the shoulders, the breath. Yet, you know, I'm still no closer to figuring out your secret. Because I don't have a secret. Um, small thing here. Your secret. His eye line feels a bit uh, vague to me here. And a bit off the mark. I think if he's trying to be suspicious of him, I would have leveled his eyes a little bit closer to try and see this guy. I'm still no closer to figuring out your secret and really try and make it obvious that he's looking at him out of the corner of his eye there. So that relationship gets a little bit lost. Secret. Because I don't have to. Let me just play this through again. Still no closer to figuring out your secret. Because I don't have a secret. Well you must. Wanna explain I really like this um sort of two D I'm not sure what you did here. It looks like a dry brush technique. It's really fun the way you came up with that idea to have that uh, sort of devil character move up onto the shoulder like that. Alright, so when he says his, the uh, the main guy there in the green shirt Closer to figuring out your secret because I When he says, because I don't have a secret What does he say? Because I don't have a secret Yeah, because I don't have a secret So I would delay, have delayed the look over because it gets a little bit confusing Again, watching this purely objectively, I knew the devil character was over here. He had just spoken, but this guy immediately goes to him. So I'm thinking, well, maybe this was the guy, you know, he's talking also. So I think to avoid that sort of confusion, I would delay the look over and let him deliver his line to the devil character and then look at the guy and wink, the, the angel. Figuring out your secret because I don't have a secret. So he's looking over here. He says, "Figuring out your secret." And he's look. He's watching him. So if the guy's here and he's saying, "Figuring out your secret," and he's you know, he's watching, him, goes, "Because I don't have a secret." And then, he, and then secret. And as he finishes that line, kind of half, and then wink at the other guy. So, figuring out your secret. And then he's like, "Because I don't have a secret." Wink to the other one. Well, you must. One that explains how you're able to be so, you know, frustrated. I like this little thinking pose you have here. You know, frustratingly you. Um, since you have complete control of the camera and everything, I wish that this wasn't so crowded at the top of frame. Everything gets really tight up there. Probably would have brought the camera up a little bit. Just crane it up to give yourself a little bit more room. I like that you punched in on it and everything. But I think you could afford to lose a little bit of the bottom and add it to the top of the frame. You just everything's just sort of crowded up here. Be so, you know, frustratingly you. His reaction after he gets tapped on the head, I think he can wait a few more frames, maybe about eight more frames or so. He taps him on the head, which is a great uh, gesture. I like that a lot. But it's almost like tap. It's like tap. His reaction just feels too quick. It just needs a little bit more of a pause there. Tingly you. And since everything drives back at the same time, I know that they're sort of connected to him. Um. I think that. You. 
if you could have delayed the devil and angel a little bit, have him, his, he gets tapped on the head, he waits a beat, and then he gets his reaction. And when he reacts, he pulls back, and angel and the devil follow a few more frames behind him. I like that you have this, like, is it a, I guess a book or something floating? And it's offset from what the angel is doing. But in the, by the same token, I think you can do that with how the, uh, how they both react when, when he pulls back. And I know you don't have a lot of time, and these, you know, these are all things that you could possibly add on later. The staging things, though, right up front, I would try and nail those down going into it. Um, you know, there's small details, like when he goes up on his, his toe here, this foot and leg, I, it, it almost looks like he's still standing on something that isn't there. So that pose doesn't read well. Um, so I would have tried to experiment maybe if you brought or made it obvious that this leg, screen right leg, was holding the weight. So this hip would be, you know, up higher than this one could possibly, you know, have, you know, bent a little bit, dipped, because th there's no weight on it. But the fact that it's sort of still stable and, and the hips remain uh, level leads me to think that there's weight, but there's something invisible that he's standing on. Does that make sense? Only you. Yet, yeah, do you know, I'm still no closer to figuring out your secret. Oh, um, yeah, and the tail work. Really nice job keeping that alive and some nice shapes in there without it becoming distracting. And that's not an easy thing to do. <laughs> Yet, yeah, do you know, I'm still no closer to figuring out... I like the, um, the fact that you thought about a secondary action for this guy in the green shirt, you know, stamping papers and whatnot. Your secret. Because I don't have a secret. Well, you must. One that explains how you're able to be so... This, I, this, I like what your thought here and the staging is, well, the thought and the fact that you were trying to push in on this. this the way that it follows through and we lose so much of this guy's face without gaining a lot of, of him um, leads me to think there's probably a better solution. Going into it is fine. Then when we come up into, you know, coming up into this and the lean in, everything sort of feels weighted to the right side of the screen. Um, I kind of wish that we saw a little bit more of the, you know, the devil character. And then give yourself a chance to uh, see this guy a little bit better here. Just the way it's set up and uh, this final pose, again, it's crowded towards the top. and it's, I don't mind that it's sort of crushing the right side of the screen so much, but um, I think that just even a simple change, bringing it a little bit more screen left, bringing your devil down a little bit more to be like a third across the... Um, you know, across the frame here. You know the old rule of thirds? Of course you do. I would have tried to land it more um, in a, you know, concordance with that. Get his eye sort of pegged there. and All right. You're able to be so... You know, frustratingly you. Oh, um, lip yeah, sync wise. You know, I'm still no... You did some great stuff. Yeah, do you know, I'm still no closer to figuring out your secret. Because I don't have a secret. Well, you must. That. Your must. At the end of must, I like the little extra accent you gave after he hit the T, must, and you let it release. Well, you must. One that explains how you're able to be so... You know, frustratingly you. Um, all of that being said, you know, staging-wise and whatnot, you do have some uh, great things happening here. You have the uh, asymmetry in the face, which leads to this guy, his arm. I mean, there's still there's some great things. You know, things kind of just point to where we need them to go. So you hit that one really nicely. All right. So I think with... Um, you know, having an opening stage, you know, your 
st establishing shot really needs to tell the story to your audience that's seeing this for the first time. Um, should be just very apparent. We don't want to lose this little angel guy. He gets kind of left behind. Um, going into your close-up, you know, we'd have to figure out. That, I mean, the, the staging of this is fine. It's just where it occurs right off the bat really, you know, threw me. Because I'm like, who's this little guy? Why is he in front? And all that stuff. Um, and the pose, the, for the most part, your posing is nice. So some reactions. I mentioned, you know, the delay. His little tap reaction. And probably the fact that about this one is the fact that this guy folds up his arms. Um, everything sort of just, you know, frustratingly you. Everything sucks back and, and happens at the same time. That's the weird thing about this one for me. Is the, that green shirted guy reacts and then the guy's arms, everything sort of just hits at the same moment. I just think that if you offset it, I know I see that his arms, you know, they finish and this guy's arms sort of delay and they all sort of then stop at the same time. I think... So, you know, frustratingly you. Probably he could give the tap, do the reaction, and then his wind up into this could happen. Tap either sooner or tap, and then they react, and then he goes into this thing. Just offset that more. Okay, um, fantastic job, and I hope that uh, this has been helpful for you. Real pleasure seeing your work. I think you did some uh, really nice animation, especially, you know, having to deal with three characters and, you know, triple the amount of work and coming up with the idea and all that kind of stuff. I think you did a really fantastic job. So, uh, good luck to you, and I hope I see you around campus. And once again, uh, thank you for participating in the 11 Second Club. Take care now.